Greetings once again, ladies and gentlemen. This is Stan for What It Takes Radio, and we are here to help you reach your audience and uh, bring your message to life with a live on-air radio program for today. And it is the 1st of December, and I have two stories to tell you. It's only 12 minutes, so uh, thank you for listening. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is Stan, and it's the 1st of December. And I remember many years ago, and for a number of years, I always began December 1st this way. That's right, December 1st. When I was involved in uh, international radio, that's how I began December 1st. It was uh, usually the early morning, and I had my headphones on, and I was quiet, waiting for the sound coming through my headphones that told me that the Spanish language part of our radio station was shutting down, and the English language part was just beginning. And because it was December 1st, I said, greetings, ladies and gentlemen. It's the 1st of December. And I played, there you go, joy to the world. Yes, joy to the world. And that was the start, of course, of uh, the uh, Christmas season on the radio station. And uh, like many other radio stations around the world, uh, our programming very much shifted into the holiday mode. But I always began it that way, just to remind people that uh, it wasn't just about Santa Claus, and it certainly wasn't about gifts, and it certainly wasn't about too much shopping and taking too much into our lives. Actually, this is called, in many cases, the Advent season, which means uh, uh, waiting. Waiting. Something is approaching. Something is coming. And we need to get ready for what is coming. And so that was always a little bit of the way we would frame the work we did to uh, say, it's about something that's coming, something that's important, something that'll make a difference, perhaps in your day, maybe even in your life. And so I always said, December 1st, the uh, first day of the last month of the year, we should think about the year that has passed and obviously give some thought to what might happen in the uh, celebration days of the month. And then, of course, uh, when January 1st came around, maybe we should enter the new year with a different way of thinking, maybe even a different way of being. Not just new resolutions, but uh, uh, new in so many other 
ways perhaps not seen, not experienced before, but it was always a way to say joy, real joy, not the political joy, the real joy that something new, something good, something great could come our way. Just wait. The good will be coming. So uh, I say that today. But uh, before that, December 1st had always stuck in my mind. And it goes back many, many years when I was a young boy. You see, uh, I was, uh, I don't know, about 12 years old, I guess, maybe 13, around then, I think. And I had finally gotten what I wanted. <laughs> I had gotten a newspaper route. And that meant that I just didn't have to live on the allowance that my dad had given me. And uh, I think I got a, a nickel per year. So you know, every week I got 60 cents, something like that. But now I had a paper route and I was a paper boy and I could deliver newspapers. And after working six days a week, two and a half, three hours every day after school, and then almost all day Saturday collecting the money from my customers and then going and paying the money to the newspaper office for the papers that I had. That's literally how it worked. You had to get the money from your customers, and uh, then uh, you had to take the money that they gave you, and then you had to go and give most of it to the newspaper. But perhaps there was for each customer maybe a dime left over. And uh, you could keep that dime. And since I finally had 70 customers, and I worked so hard to get them and keep them and be nice to them, that meant if everybody had paid, which didn't always happen, I had $7 that I could spend. <laughs> Wow! But I remember December 1st because it was on that day, and I believe it was 1958, that the word was already out that a terrible fire had broken out in a, a small Catholic school called Lady of Our Angels in Chicago. And the, the fire, by the time it was done with, uh, 95 children had died. That's right. It was a terrible fire, terrible tragedy. And, and, and I remember it was just a, as the newspaper was coming off the presses, it, it very, very much uh, highlighted that what they knew at that time of that terrible event in Chicago. And I remember folding my papers and thinking about that. And, and I just started to cry. I just started to cry. Think about that. I mean, and they were children my age. And they were just, Christmas was coming. And uh, they had died in a terrible fire. And I remember as I was rolling up my... Uh, Newspapers, and what would happen is your, because of the ink was still fresh on the newspaper, your hands would always get, you know, printer's ink dirty, you know, and kind of mess things up. And I remember kind of wiping away a tear from my eye and seeing that, you know, that I'd blotched my face, you know. But I always remember that. And that, um, that remains with me many, many years later, every December 1st. I am reminded, yeah, that I declare joy to the world. That's right, and it is. But I also remember that that world has deep sadness and deep sorrow. And perhaps there's something about the life I should live that should try and do something about that from time to time. Because on uh, December 1st, it was joy to the world, but it was also the day and I remember it every December 1st, including this one, about the tragedy of Our Lady of Angels Fire in Chicago, Illinois, on December 1st, 1958.
And I share both my sorrow at that memory, but in my joy of expectation, and to think that I have been able to live fully for many, many years, something that was denied to those children my same age. How blessed I am. How grateful I am. How wonderful it is. Indeed, I'm not only live on the air, I have a chance to live and to live more fully every day. I just thought I would share with you a little bit of both the unhappiness, but also the joy of the day. And I like to share that with you. I look forward to uh, serving you and helping you in many ways this year. I'm hoping that uh, this uh, year will be one of my finest, even though I'm now old and if I still had hair, it would be great. But <laughs> in effect, be able to show that there's a number of things that we can do that might be helpful to you in your business, in your life, and in your spirit force. Let's see if we can make that happen. Indeed, may comfort and joy be yours today and in this season. And may you not only survive, but thrive in 25. Bye for now.